Native American isn't one big, homogenous group. No siree. We're talking about over 500 distinct tribes, each with their own languages, traditions, and unique ways of life. Whether you're curious about the Navajo, Cherokee, Lakota, or any other tribe, you're in for a treat. Number 50. In 1847, during the Great Potato Famine, the Choctaw Nation, a Native American tribe, pitched in $170 to help out folks in Ireland. It's pretty amazing that they did this, and it's one of the earliest instances of international humanitarian aid. Number 49. The Iroquois Confederacy played a real role in shaping the United States Constitution. The Founding Fathers were seriously impressed by their ideas about democracy, freedom, and equality. Number 48. The Cherokee tribe, you won't believe this, they've got their own writing system. It's got a whopping 85 characters that stand for different syllables. And what's cool is that it's not like your usual alphabet-based thing. They're pretty unique, right? Number 47. Native American tribes were all about using willow tree bark as a painkiller. And guess what? That's the stuff that eventually turned into aspirin. The active ingredient in the bark is salicin, a chemical that in 1897 formed the basis of the discovery of aspirin, the most commonly used drug in the world. Pretty cool, huh? Number 46. The Pueblo people in New Mexico have been building those multi-story adobe buildings for centuries. Like, they're the OGs of the construction game. Adobe is like a DIY brick made from mud and straw. Pueblo people built their homes by stacking these bricks and sealing the gaps with more mud to keep out the elements and critters. Simple and effective. Number 45, the Cherokee tribe was like, hey, let's try using this bitter plant called Ipecacuana for dysentery. Turns out it ended up being a go-to remedy for diarrhea. It's also used for the type of nausea that doesn't go away even after vomiting such as occurs with a stomach virus or motion sickness and is accompanied by painful heaving. Number 44. So, you've got these cool Native American Olympic Games that happen every two years. They're all about some awesome traditional stuff like buffalo races, tug-of-war, and the hoop and pole game. It's a blast. Number 43. Check this out. The Haudenosaunee a confederacy of six tribes up in the northeastern U.S. came up with this cool idea called the Three Sisters. It's all about planting corn, beans, and squash together in a way that helps all three plants and keeps the soil happy. Number 42. Guess what? Native Americans actually have their own sign language. They call it Plains Indian Sign Language. They came up with it so that different tribes could talk to each other when they didn't share the same spoken languages. Cool, right? Number 41. You know, when you hear Native American, it might seem like it's all one big group. But here's the deal. There are actually over 500 officially recognized tribes in the good old USA alone. As of March 24, 2023, 574 Indian tribes were legally recognized by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, BIA of the United States. Of these, 228 are located in Alaska. Number 40. Native Americans were the ones who first hooked Europeans up with tobacco, and man, did that turn into a major moneymaker. Around 6000 BC, Native Americans were the OG tobacco growers. Then, around 1 BC, indigenous tribes started puffing on it for religious and medicinal vibes. Fast forward to 1492, Christopher Columbus gets his first taste of dried tobacco leaves as a gift from American Indians. That's how the smoking story began. Number 39. So those Plains Native American tribes were all about these rad teepees. They were made to pop up and come down super easily. Teepees were the go-to homes for the nomadic tribes of the Great Plains. They'd set them up using long poles as the frame, kind of like a giant cone. They tie the poles together at the top and spread them out at the bottom. And to finish it off, they'd wrap the outside with a big old piece of buffalo hide. Number 38. You know, it's pretty messed up, but the Choctaw folks were the first ones the U.S. government kicked out of their homes in that whole Trail of Tears thing. 
Back in the 1830s, the U.S. government tried to kick the Choctaw Nation out of their deep south home and make them move to Indian Territory, west of the Mississippi River. It was called the Choctaw Trail of Tears, and it was a pretty awful chapter in U.S. history. Number 37. Did you know the Hopi tribe out in Arizona has been living in the same spot for ages? Like it's one of the oldest places still going strong in North America. The Hopi originally settled near the foot of the mesas, but in the course of the 17th century, moved to the mesa tops for protection from the Utes, Apaches, and Spanish. Number 36. The Seminole tribe basically said, nope, no thanks to peace treaties with the U.S. They held on to their land and never gave in. The Seminoles of Florida call themselves the Unconquered People, descendants of just 300 Indians who managed to elude capture by the U.S. Army in the 19th century. Number 35. You wouldn't believe it, but Native Americans are really stepping up in the U.S. military. Like more of them, per person, serve in the armed forces than any other group. They're all in. So, as of November 2021, there were over 24,000 folks rocking it in the military on active duty. And among them, we've got some awesome American Indian and Alaskan Native representation. Plus, after they've done their service, there are more than 183,000 veterans who proudly identify as American Indian or Alaskan Native. Number 34. You won't believe it but Pocahontas and John Rolfe were actually the first recorded interracial couple in U.S. history. Their marriage really broke some ground there. Rolfe and the princess were married on April 5, 1614, an event that assured peace with the local Indians for eight years. Number 33. You know that bald eagle you see on the U.S. shield? Turns out it's actually borrowed from the Iroquois Confederacy symbol they had some cool inspiration. The bald eagle is a traditional symbol of American strength and vigilance, symbolizing the worldwide goal of peaceful operations in space. Number 32. Native Americans were behind this red dye called cochineal, and get this, they used it to color those snazzy British uniforms during the Revolutionary War. What's more, the Plains Indians, particularly the Lakota, made use of ready-made cochineal dyed woolen cloth for ceremonial purposes, as in a headdress incorporating the dyed fabric into an eagle and turkey feather adorned trailer. Number 31. Can you believe it? Native Americans were actually the first to figure out anesthetics. So before they clued in the Europeans, doctors were doing surgeries without any numbing stuff. Ouch! Number 30. You've got to hear about this. The Sioux tribe has this sacred stone they call the Indian Kara. They're totally convinced. It's got some serious spiritual and healing mojo. Pretty cool, right? Number 29. Check this out. The Native American game of lacrosse goes way back, and it's got some real cultural importance. They used to play it to settle beef between tribes. Can you believe that? The game was initially played in the St. Lawrence Valley area by the Algonquian tribe, and they were followed by other tribes in the eastern half of North America and around the western Great Lakes. Number 28. The Inuit folks up in the Arctic are pretty clever when it comes to surviving in crazy cold conditions. They build these awesome dome-shaped snow houses called igloos that keep them warm and safe from the wild weather. How cool is that? Number 27. Native American tribes are all about that nature connection, you know? They see animals as these special spiritual guides and messengers. It's like they've got a hotline to Mother Nature herself. Native Americans hold a deep reverence for nature. They operate under the conviction that all objects and elements of the earth, both living and non-living, have an individual spirit that is part of the greater soul of the universe. Number 26. You won't believe it but the Navajo tribe has their own language that's like crazy hard to pick up. From tones to grammar and verbs, Navajo is a completely different language to English. Some say it's one of the toughest languages on the planet to learn. Number 25. 
the Choctaw tribe was kind of into this matrilineal thing, you know? So basically, if your mom was part of a certain family or clan, that's what you'd inherit. And did you know? Before 1820, Choctaw territory encompassed more than 23 million acres, primarily in present-day Mississippi, and extended into sections of present-day Alabama and Louisiana. Number 24. So, up in the freezing Arctic, the Inuit folks were like, hey, let's create this awesome thing called a kayak. It's like a super light canoe, perfect for cruising around on icy waters and hunting. Number 23 the Apache tribe. They were all about becoming these super badass warriors. They were like the kings of horseback riding and guerrilla warfare tactics, just totally owning it. They were feared by other tribes and Europeans as the fiercest warriors in the Southwest. Number 22. The Navajo folks had this slick move during World War II. They used their own native language to shoot out top secret messages. And guess what? Nobody could crack the code. They were on fire. Number 21. Native American tribes were pretty smart when it came to keeping their grub fresh. They'd smoke, dry, and even ferment stuff, making sure they had enough chow to get through those chilly winter months. They had it all figured out. Number 20. Hey, guess what? There are like around 175 different indigenous languages spoken in the U.S. right now. Pretty cool, huh? But among these 175 Native American languages, only 20 of these were widely known, and 55 were spoken by only a few elderly tribal members. 100 other languages were somewhere between these extremes. Number 19. So when it comes to Native American tribes, the big players are Cherokee, Navajo, and some Latin American Indian tribes. Up in Alaska, you've got Yupik, Inupiat and Tlingitida holding it down as the main crews. Number 18. Believe it or not, Native Americans didn't officially become U.S. citizens until way back in 1924, when Congress passed the Indian Citizenship Act. And even though they got the right to vote that same year, it took a whopping 40 years for all 50 states to get on board with giving them the voting rights they deserved. Number 17. So there was this real messed up thing called the Trail of Tears. Between 1830 and 1850, around 60,000 Native Americans got forcibly moved around. It was brutal. Almost 4,000 folks died from disease, exposure, and not having enough to eat. You can actually go walk some of that trail in Springfield, Missouri, kind of like a way to remember and honor their history. Number 16. Native American Heritage Month didn't just pop out of nowhere. Back then, they had this thing called American Indian Week that President Reagan declared during the week of November 23rd to the 30, 1986. Then, in 1990, President George H.W. Bush was like, let's make November 1990 National American Indian Heritage Month. And later on, under President Barack Obama, they switched it up and called it Native American Heritage Month. Number 15. You won't believe it, but the Powhatan tribe had a huge hand in keeping those early British folks alive in Jamestown, Virginia. Chief Powhatan basically saved the day by giving them food and taking care of them when they were dealing with starvation and all kinds of sickness. But here's the kicker. Even after all that help, the English just couldn't resist taking over Powhatan land. Number 14. You know, a bunch of words we use today like chipmunk, pecan, and skunk actually come from Native American languages, specifically Algonquian. When those English explorers first landed in North America, they were chatting it up with the locals who spoke Algonquian, and they ended up picking up some cool words. And it's not just those. Even words like chocolate, potato, and poncho have Native American roots. Number 13. Do you know the sequoia tree? It's got its name from this Cherokee leader dude named Sequoia. He did something pretty awesome. Came up with an alphabet for his tribe to use. Known as the world's most massive tree, giant sequoias never stop growing and can reach heights of 300 feet and weigh over 600 tons. They are also among the oldest living organisms on Earth and can live to be 3,000 years old. 
Number 12. Did you know that indigenous folks have been kicking it in North America since like way back in 12,000 BCE? The Clovis peoples were long considered to be the first people to inhabit the Americas. Uh, archaeologists theorized that Clovis peoples came over the land bridge and down a glacier pass to the east of the Rocky Mountains, sometime between 12,000 to 11,000 BCE, eventually spreading through much of North America. Number 11. Native people were pretty clever, you know, they'd craft tools from whatever nature had to offer. Like, some of them used porcupine hair to whip up hairbrushes, or just grabbed some sticks to make toothbrushes. The native connection to Mother Earth is far deeper than that of conservationists. All life flows through her. Earth, fire, water, and wind each play a vital role for Native Americans, those of the past and many still today. Number 10. Over half of the U.S. states have names that come from native languages. Think Connecticut, Utah, Kentucky, and a bunch more. One example is Connecticut, derived from the word Quinnitukut, meaning Long River, which is what the Mohegan tribe called the longest river in New England. Number 9. Here's a fun fact. The Iroquois were like the OG trick-or-treaters way before it became a thing. So, during their yearly winter fest, the Iroquois kids would tag along with a cool older lady and hit up different houses to score some gifts. It was basically Halloween before Halloween. Number 8. Lots of native women were total badasses, you know? They didn't sit on the sidelines. Nope, they jumped right into the action. Alongside the guys in battles like the Battle of Little Bighorn and the Battle of the Rosebud. Talk about some fierce warriors. Number seven. Man, it's a pretty dark part of history, but more than 20,000 Native Americans in California were kind of forced into something like slavery by those mission folks and missionaries like Junipero Serra. Not cool at all. Number six. Those Christian missionaries, they kind of got it wrong with totem poles. They thought these poles were all about Native gods, but actually, they were more about showing off family status. You'd see animals on them that were super important to the families, and sometimes they'd even make them as a tribute to their ancestors. So it's more like a family thing than a god thing. Number five. You won't believe it, but the word barbecue actually comes from the Arawakan Indian language, and it means something like framework of sticks. Pretty cool, right? Loads of communities in Brazil are still chatting it up in Arawakan languages, and you can also find folks speaking these languages in places like Peru, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, French Guiana, and Suriname. It's like a linguistic party across South America. Number four. Check this out. The Mohawk hairstyle got its name from the Mohawks, one of the tribes in the Iroquois gang. These Mohawk folks were pretty rad. They'd rock a shaved side of their head and paint the other side with some bright colors. Number three. So, the Lakota, Sioux, had this epic eagle feather headdress that was like head-to-toe awesomeness. But here's the deal. You could only rock that thing if you were a warrior who had shown some serious guts in battle. Those eagle feathers they were like gold because they were believed to pack some serious spiritual power. Number two, Dakota is the Sioux tribe's name, and it's pretty cool because it means allies, like they were all about sticking together. The name Sioux was adopted in English by the 1760s from French. Number one, you're not going to believe this, but avocado comes from the Aztec people in central Mexico. In their language, Nahuatl. It actually means testicle. Weird, right? Nahuatl, the most important of the uto aztecan languages, was the language of the Aztec and Toltec civilizations of Mexico. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through the rich history and culture of Native Americans. We hope you've enjoyed these 50 fascinating facts. If you're hungry for more knowledge and cultural insights, check out our other videos right here on the screen. You won't want to miss them. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.